Good morning and a blessed Monday morning to you. We pick up where we left off last Monday in the third chapter of Paul's great letter to the church at Philippi. And specifically, we're going to begin today in verse 18. Remember, we've been studying in a section that talks about growing in Christ likeness. And what the Apostle Paul does in these verses that we're going to study today, what he does is he gives us a negative example. In other words, don't do this. Don't do this. So let's start in verse 18 of chapter 3. The Apostle Paul, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, writes this. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly. And their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. Paul's saying an awful lot here, isn't he? So let's, let's break this down. Verse 19 again. Their end is destruction. Remember, Paul's talking about these enemies of Christ. And so when he says their end is destruction, what he's talking about is their eternal destiny. He then says, their God is the belly. What's that about? What Paul's talking about here are legalists and libertines. Legalists and libertines. Legalists were those who believed that if they adhered to the dietary laws, it was linked to their salvation. The libertines were those who wanted the satisfaction of whatever sensual craving that they had. So Paul says then about these legalists and these libertines, he says to them, their God is the belly. Their God is the belly. And then he says, and their glory is in their shame. In other words, the legalists, their delight, what they glorified in, was linking salvation to fulfilling of the law, specifically here, the dietary laws. And the libertines, what they were glorying in, was fulfilling their sensual desires. Paul says, their glory is in their shame. Then he says, their minds are set on earthly things. Minds are set on earthly things. Remember, this is that section we've been studying in that talks about how, by God's grace, we can become more and more like Jesus Christ. And so here's a negative example. In other words, don't go this direction. Don't do this, Paul is saying. Paul then shifts. He lifts our eyes upward. Verse 20, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation, that it may be conformed to the body of his glory, by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. What a beautiful phrase here, where Paul says, but our citizenship, or you can translate that the commonwealth or homeland, but our citizenship is in heaven. And what God is going to give to us is the resurrected body like the Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy for the Christian to anticipate. You see, instead of focusing on the earthly things, he lifts our eyes to focus on our homeland, heaven itself. It's so important, I think, to remember that these days that God gives us, this side of heaven, we're just, we're just passing through. 
Has anyone ever asked you, do you live here or are you just passing through? Well, we live here in the sense that God has appointed for us days this side of heaven, but our homeland is really in heaven. So really and fundamentally, we can look at our life this side of heaven as we're just passing through. We're just passing through. And God has placed us here to bring him glory. And so each and every day then, by God's grace, he is at work transforming us to be more and more like Jesus Christ. Focus on the earthly things? No. Focus on the heavenly things in our homeland? Absolutely. And when we approach life with that understanding that we're, we're just passing through, that just brings a lightness to living, doesn't it? And it gives us a focus that today and all of our days until, baptized child, the Lord takes you and me home to be with him. All of these days are to be lived as we pass through to his glory. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the positive examples and the negative examples that are included in Scripture. We thank you, Lord, that you have called us your own in the waters of baptism. We thank you that for the Christian, today is one more day in all of eternity as we walk this side of heaven. Lord, continually remind us where our home is. Continually remind us that we're, we're just passing through. And Lord, may each day by your grace, be lived to your glory. Continue to transform us, Lord, each and every day to be more and more like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May the Lord richly bless you this week. Encourage someone 